Hi, I'm Doug Kay, and this is one of my videos for the Arcanum Library. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some relatively sophisticated features of Photoshop in preparation for some more detailed videos that we'll have in the Arcanum Library down the road. Specifically, we'll be looking at the concept of luminosity masks. And by way of showing those, we're going to take a look at blend modes, as well as the apply image command, which you may or may not be familiar with. So let's get started. This is a photograph I made in early 2013 in Havana, Cuba. Now, I'm not saying it's one of the best photographs I've ever made, but it's going to serve a purpose today. Uh, if you look at this woman, you'll notice that there are some areas of highlight that are nearly blown out. Uh, the side of her nose, her forehead, uh, as well as part of the scarf here are quite a bit lacking in detail. What we want to do is called highlight recovery, and that is to recover some of the details in the highlights. There are many techniques for doing highlight recovery. I'm just going to use one today, not so much to demonstrate how to recover highlights, but I want to show you the use of what's called a luminosity mask. In order to recover the highlights today, what we're going to do is take a shortcut. We're going to duplicate the layer, and then we're going to take the copy, the duplicate layer, and we're going to change its blend mode to multiply. And that's going to darken the image quite a bit. In fact, it darkens the image so much that we've lost all the information in the shadows. But we're going to figure out how to fix that in just a moment. Let's go in and look closely at some of the highlights. Let's look at her forehead and the scarf in particular. Here's before, and you see we've lost some detail. And now here's after the multiply move, and we've got quite a bit of that detail back. Again, before and after. So, how are we going to now address the problem of the shadows? Those of you who are familiar with layer masks might think, oh, well, let's create a layer mask. Let's start with one that's black, which means that the effect of this multiplier layer will be hidden. And let's let, then let's paint with white on that mask in the areas where we want to reveal the darkening, if you will. Now, that makes sense. But brushing is a very inaccurate way to do things. You, not only do you get brushing in an area you don't really want it, but you also have the artifacts of the edges of your brushes and so forth. We're going to do something much more elegant here. We're going to create a mask, but we actually want to fill the mask with the original image itself. Why do we want to do that? That's because the original image is light in the areas where we want to have the multiply effect, and the image is dark in the areas where we don't want the multiply effect. How do we do that? We go to Image in the menu, and then Apply Image, and we tell it we want to take the background image, uh, the background layer, all channels, and we want to apply it to the current layer mask. Let's take a look again at Before and After. Before and After. Okay. Let's take a look at the mask itself. Oh, look at that. The mask itself is, wow, a monochrome version of the original image. Notice it's light in the highlights and it's dark in the shadows. So it's going to make a pretty good mask for us. It's not quite strong enough, though. Let's turn the mask off, go and take a look here, and we'll see. Yeah, it's still a little bit, but we're still losing some detail in the shadows. The shadows are getting too dark. That's after, that's before. Uh, and the highlights aren't recovered as much as we would like. There's, again, before and after. But we can actually go into this layer mask, and we can manipulate the mask. We can make this into a higher contrast mask so that the highlights will have more of an effect from the multiply layer, and the shadows will have virtually none. We're going to do that by just going into... Uh, image adjustments. Now remember, we're working on the mask here. We're not actually working on the image itself. And we're going to make a fairly steep mask, a fairly contrasty mask, because we want quite a bit of contrast in this mask. All right. Now what we've got, if you look at it, you see we have a mask that is contrasty. We're going to completely block out the effect of what we're doing in the shadow areas. We're going to totally allow it through in the highlight areas. So let's go take a look at the image itself, see what we've done. Here we are before, and now here's after. Again, before and after. And if we go in and we take a look at the fabric, for example, up here, we look in real close, we'll see we've got a fair amount of detail that's come back. There's before and after, 
And if we look at the shadow in the eyes, there's before and after, and we see almost no change whatsoever. So we've been pretty effective with that. There's one other thing we can do here. Uh, by the way, there's a spot here on her nose, which drove me crazy. See this in the middle here? It looks like it has no texture. I think she was wearing makeup that day on that spot, and it just drove me crazy trying to retouch it because there's, in fact, no texture there. But if we look over here on her cheek, we have a similar problem. It's a little bit pasty looking. It's a little bit flat, a little bit overall tan. We've lost some detail here. And the way we get that back is a little counterintuitive. What we're going to do is blur the mask. Just remember that. Keep that in the back of your head. Always blur the mask. So let's go in and look at the mask itself. And if we double click on the mask, it brings up the properties window and we can just feather the mask. We're going to go to about oh, 10 pixel blur here. Now, why would we do that? Well, because what we're doing is essentially simulating that brushing, but in a much more controlled manner. We don't want to create texture with the mask. The texture is actually there. We want to actually bring out the texture. So that's what the blurred mask looks like. Let's take a look at what it's done to our image. Okay. Now here again, we're looking at before of all our changes and after. There's the before and there's the after. Again, before and after. And I think if you look, you'll see we've got quite a bit more detail in the highlights and we have not in any way damaged the shadow parts of the image. Once more, looking at the forehead before and after. So that's the use of a luminosity mask to control highlight recovery. Now, there are many, many more ways to use luminosity masks and many, many more ways to create luminosity masks. And we'll be looking at some of those in future videos here in the Arcanum Library. Thanks very much. I'm Doug Case. See you next time. Thank <sighs> you.